Hey guys, welcome back to another snapshot video. It's a bit surprising to get one on a Tuesday. It's basically the first 1.18 snapshot, but it's not really a regular one. You have to put in some effort to be able to test it out. You need to download a file from the patch notes, put it in your versions folder, unzip it, then select it in your launcher as the version, and then you're ready to go. All right, so this is actually a really big snapshot because the whole world has changed. It's really amazing. There's still a couple of flaws with it, but there's a lot of potential. So let's check it out. All right, so let's get started. Included in the snapshot is the whole cave generation. Again, it was already implemented a couple of months ago in previous snapshots before it was decided to split up the update. So the world starts at minus 64 again, can reach up to 319, get deep slate below y0, Got the cheese noodle case, etc. So all of this was already shown yeah, in previous snapshot videos. It's included again in this snapshot. But on top of that, the whole surface world generation also changed. So I just opened the world of a random seed, and what you can immediately notice is that terrain is a bit hillier than usual. So if we take a look at the village here, the generated at spawn, this almost looks like from a uh, amplified terrain. This is quite unusual. I can't really remember finding villages like this in the normal world generation that we had before. So this definitely is something new. When we yeah, take a look around a little bit more, this is something I also immediately noticed. We got a very small badlands biome. So I can't really remember seeing anything like this before. Uh, this is kind of interesting. So we got some really small biomes now that blend in with the other ones. All right, I would say we just have a flight around and try to check out everything that is noteworthy. Here we got another small badlands biome. It's quite an unusual look. We got yeah, some terracotta pillars here on the side that also blend in with the surrounding terrain. So we've got just a regular forest biome surrounding it. I think also the, yeah, the hills here are quite steep. It's, yeah, definitely different from what we were used before. There's also a cave entrance here. Definitely looks quite interesting. After a bit of flying around, I also quickly noticed that the rivers are much wider now, which is definitely something I approve of. You can see this is just a, a huge river biome now. It's definitely not comparable with what we had before. Here it narrows again. This is more what we were used to. So it's not as wide continuously, but it has the potential to get much wider again, like here. It's definitely a very interesting change. What also happens quite frequently is that we can find really small biomes all over the world. So here we got jungle biome, a couple of trees on one side of the river. On the other side, you got yeah, two tall trees, single bamboo plant, but that's the whole jungle biome already. I'm quite sure we'll see more examples of those mini biomes in the rest of the video. But if you take a look over to this side, this is definitely something we haven't seen before. So this really interesting terrain generation. You got a bit of wooded badlands over here, uh, which blends in nicely with the other terrain. Also, it's not really too large. And terracotta also starts higher than usual. Doesn't reach down as far as before. This is definitely quite a unique look. And if you check out the biome right next to it, that's one of the new biomes. So we will get the whole new mountain generation in the rest of the video as well. It's also really nice. But here we got the new meadows biome. This is quite interesting. It doesn't have any trees, just flowers. So unlike a flower forest biome, which always has trees as well, I think this also works quite similar to the flower forest biome. So if you would try to bow mill in a certain area, you would always get the same flowers. So in this area, yeah, the blue flowers, bro, the corn flowers. Yeah, sometimes we also get different ones. But uh, yeah, we got the yellow flowers over there. I've seen all kinds of flowers already in a different meadows biome. I've seen even the blue orchid, which was exclusive to the swamp biome before in the meadows. So this will definitely also be interesting for flower farms. Definitely an alternative now to the flower forest biome. I also noticed that the frozen ocean biomes got a lot larger than before. It just goes on and on. Can't really remember seeing yeah, anything like this before. I also can't remember seeing flowers on top of an iceberg or even a tree. So before we continue with the new mountains here in the background, let's first check out this huge frozen river. So this is all a river biome. It's not an ocean. It is one continuous layer of ice we can boat on. It's actually quite fun. Okay, oh, there we got more ocean biome here. Yeah, but all frozen river here. Pretty cool. 
All right, so here we got the new mountain generation. I think there we got the snowy slopes biome. That's quite interesting because you can find the powder snow in here. So no longer is it required to tediously get the powder snow by yeah, waiting until it snows into a cauldron. You can also find it um, yeah, naturally and can just mine it or pick it up with the bucket. There's plenty of powder snow here. It's definitely worth a visit. You don't want to do the yeah, tedious farming. But yeah, let's check out the mountains next. I'll just show you a couple more examples of the new biome generation. Here we got the snowy slopes biome again that leads up to a mountain over here. On the side we got the new growth biome. So basically it's for tree generation on the side of the mountain. To get out an F3 menu, we got the growth biome. And this mountain goes up to Y130. It's by far not the tallest I've seen. Where I flew around a bit earlier, I saw when it goes up to Y200. Also, very often in the mountain biome, you would have a cave entrance and even have some lush cave generation at the side. I hope we can find it later. I think on the other side, um, there's also a bit of packed ice. Yeah, that generates the mountain. This one goes up to Y140. So I'll try to fly around a little bit more, maybe find a taller one again. And I just noticed this one has a really nice cave entrance. So as I said, there's a bit of lush cave here. Really huge cave inside of the mountain. Yeah, there's a whole cave system we can follow. Yeah, it's really impressive. I'm still searching for that really tall mountain, but here I found a really good example that shows how the normal biome a train generation also gets affected. So over here we got the giant spruce tiger biome. We got the two bit hoot trees. I think it was also called mega tiger before. Usually those biomes were rather flat or a little bit hilly, but here we got yeah, like proper mountains with trees on top. Definitely really like the look of this. All right, here we got a pretty good example of a really tall mountain. It's also quite steep. We can maybe follow the terrain a little bit or the path you would need to take to get up here. Usually you can always jump up a block. So it is definitely doable. Find a nice path to get up here. Yeah, so this is Y 174. We've even seen higher. But yeah, also check out here the, the middle. This is quite a mountain ridge here. Yeah, this is quite huge. Really like this. Very impressive. So highest block here is Y 180, but just overall this is huge because there's the next mountain right next to it. The valley in between. Oh, this is really impressive stuff. Man, yeah, this will be fun to play with. Can't wait for it. Definitely a game changer. Oh, here it goes even up, even higher, 180 again. Yeah, it's really impressive. They even got a huge cave entrance, peak of the mountain. Let's follow it a little bit. Huge cave system below. Oh, this is nice stuff. The type of biome variation is really impressive now. So I found a 185 tall mountain. And if you just follow the path here, so here we got some lush caves at the surface, some really interesting stuff. Then if you just follow the normal biomes, oh, there's even more lush caves over here. Um, they just, yeah, follow the mountain line. So we get trees up to Y150, so just the normal uh, forest biome. And then the mountain biome generation starts. So you can have the, basically the normal biomes just up really high. And you have to follow this, get to the lofty peaks, 185 high. Okay, let's check out this one here. So we've got a really small desert biome between the savanna up there. We got a little bit of badlands even. Then there we got a village, a desert village. On top of a mountain that is in a normal plains biome. Really interesting stuff. I just love the whole variation. After years of seeing the same stuff over and over again, it's just nice to finally have different terrain. I'm super happy. Oh, there we got villager outpost here on top. <laughs> oh, this is nice stuff. And finally, we also have proper rivers. At least one thing hasn't changed, so the mushroom island looks the same. Let's also take a look at the nether because we had to before huge changes were made in the overworld. Nobody was expecting it, but the nether also changed somehow. And 
Probably looks a little bit weird. So if you just look at the fortress generation here and this huge lava lake on the side, it doesn't stop at all, it just goes on and on. Sikonesa has also changed. Yeah, I'm almost certain that it has. Okay, maybe let's follow terrain here a little bit. We can see a bit more. Is the fortress also larger than usual, or is it just two? It definitely feels a bit weird. Yeah, definitely the Nether has changed. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely certain now. Okay, let's follow this. That almost goes up vertically from one side to the other, and we got an achievement. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Nether definitely changed. <laughs> so in general, I don't think this is really intended, but the whole terrain is also just a lot steeper. If you look at this basalt delta here, this doesn't look intended at all. And... Yeah, there's almost no flat area at all. Everything is really steep now. The main island, on the other hand, pretty much looks the same. Except one difference. You might have noticed it. Where are the obsidian pillars? That I'm missing somehow. All normal though, with the outer end islands, this is pretty much as expected. Alright, enough of the terrain generation. Definitely really exciting stuff we got there. Really looking forward to that. But now let's talk about one more significant change was made in Snapshot. That I think will make a lot of people happy. So mobs from now on can only spawn in absolute darkness. So that basically means light level zero. Previously mobs could also spawn at the lower light levels. So usually up to seven, not quite as frequent, but it still could. So in case you needed to make a build of your spawn proof, you always needed to make sure that you have light levels eight or higher to completely um, yeah, remove any option for creepers to spawn, for example. So, in case you had a glowstone block in your floor, for example, you could put carpet on top of it. Only diorite blocks were 100% spawn proof. The outer blocks still had some mob spawning, just with a lower chance. But from now on, even the planks on the outside are spawn proof. So, you can see the area that is spawn proof, a single yeah, block now got a lot larger. So, it will be a lot easier to light up your buildings to avoid mob spawning entirely. And that's something that, yeah, that almost has no downsides. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, mob farms, on the other hand, shouldn't be affected by this at all. A proper mob farm usually was already working with light level zero because the mob spawning wasn't as frequent with the, the low light level. So people usually already avoided having low light levels in the mob farm. So nothing really would change in that regard. So this is definitely yeah, some really good stuff here. Also, I don't think this would affect the normal gameplay too much, so they would spawn at night time a bit later and stop spawning a bit earlier. Um, but I don't think this would shift the weight tremendously. In case you're wondering, like I was, so some mobs that aren't affected by light levels, like for example, gas completely ignore the light level, still are able to spawn for really high light level. So nothing changed in that regard. All right, that's it for today. Thanks guys for watching. See you next time and bye bye.